These font sizes automatically reduce on each breakpoint, with larger sizes shrinking at a greater rate. We can select anything from our adaptive size folder and the responsiveness is automatically handled for us. Any changes we make here are affecting the H2 tag and class from one place. The same size variables that power our font size can also be applied to any other adaptive sizes throughout our site. And thanks to custom properties, we can now link font weight and even text transform to variables. So let's set this up for ourselves. So let's create a size variable and we'll put this in a folder called H2 and we'll call this font size. Let's set that to 4 rim, and under that we'll have a font family. This is our H2 font family. We can choose one from here. Under that we'll need a font weight. Since there's no option for that, we'll choose size, and we'll call this H2 font weight. Under that we'll need a line height, so another size. This will be H2 line height. And usually we'd want to set this with a unitless line height, but since that's not supported in variables, we can do 1.5 EM instead. It'll look the exact same as a unitless because it's multiplying off the rim font size. Under that we'll have a letter spacing. This is another size and we can have letter spacing. We usually always want EM letter spacing so that it scales when the font size changes. And under that we can have a text transform. So we'll call this H2 text transform and that'll just be another size. So to add our text transforms, we can create a size variable. We'll put this in a folder of text transform with a value of none. We can also add size variables for uppercase, capitalize, and lowercase. And when we apply a text transform to our H2, we can choose from any of these. For our font weights, we can add a size variable of font weight 100. Fonts are set in weights from 100 to 900, so we can add all those options here. Now Webflow sorts our folder names alphabetically, so our H2 is getting a bit lost. To fix that, we can add a period in front of the folder name. The more periods we add, the higher in the list it goes, and these periods are not included in the variable name. So now from our font weight, we can select any of these from our font weight folder. Then in an embed, we can update our font weights and text transforms to the correct values. On our all h2 tag, we can link the font family to the h2 font family, the font size to the h2 font size, line height to h2 line height, letter spacing to h2 letter spacing and we can also link something like font weight to the h2 font weight and we'll also add text transform and let's go ahead and link that to the variable of h2 text transform and once we have that set now all of our font styles are applied with variables so instead of applying line height and letter spacing directly i like to have separate folders for each of these things that way we can make global updates so these are all the line heights we're using throughout our site. If we want to change any instance of 1.5 EM to 1.6, all we need to do is change the variable name and the value, and every heading using this will update from one place. Same goes for our letter spacing, and to apply this, we can just go to our line height here and pull any value from our line height folder. Same for our letter spacing, we can link this to any value from that folder. Now, for the font family and font weight, I like to have a separate folder for these as well called font. This stores our primary font family and the weights associated with this. If we have a secondary family, we could add this in and the weights for that family as well. So let's go ahead and set this. Let's say that this font uses a uh, font weight of 300 for its regular. Maybe it uses a weight of 500 for its medium and a weight of 600 for its bold. So if we ever want to swap out the weights we're using with this family, we can do it from one place instead of going to each heading individually. And then when we choose this, we can choose our primary font family and we choose from our weights. We'll go to that same font folder and just choose maybe our medium weight. And then for font sizes and any other adaptive elements, we can have a size folder that powers the responsiveness of our whole site. Obviously, we want a lot more sizes in here, but when we go to apply a font size, we can just choose from anything in that size folder. And then to make these sizes responsive, all we need to do in an embed is on tablet, we'll update the value of this 4RIM to be 3RIM, and then on landscape, we'll update 4RIM to be 2.5RIM, so they'll continue to shrink.